Oh, did I start the video already? Okay, so welcome to the video. This video is specifically focused on M1 MacBook Air review from the perspective of students. So if you are a student, then you must watch this before you make a choice whether you are going to buy the M1 MacBook Air or not. So just to give you a context, this is my first entry into this MacBook ecosystem. So that's why I had a lot of issues like when you have uh, the closing of the tab or the minimize, minimizing the tab in Windows, which I was using frequently. Um, it's on the right, here it's on the left and the keyboard, there are slight differences depending on the width and everything. So that took like a week to get used to it, but I really love the typing in this keyboard is really really nice the typing and the experience that you get and once you get used to it which will take like a day or two then you will see that the speed with which you type is also really good so talking about the speed so the performance is really really good you can see the geekbench scores and surprisingly the scores were really uh, more than what the average score was shared on the internet maybe it varies from machine to machine i don't have that much idea this is the first time that I was doing a Geekbench score. So yeah, I was really happy. The best thing is that it's very portable. So I have already been using it for like four months from December. I have not used it that heavily because I also have a Windows system which I showed you a long time back. So most of my work is done on that. But sometimes while writing papers and doing some short programming, which I'll tell you further in the video, uh, I use the MacBook Air and uh, I find it very uh, easy because you can take it virtually anywhere like you can go out if it is a sunny weather and sit outside and type and uh, do it on your bed, couch, any place so it's very convenient, very portable and the battery is also really really good. For me if I watch like light videos, hear some music have Bluetooth Wi-Fi connection on and uh, keep on writing then on an average it was like 12 to 14 hours so sometimes if I tie, walk on it like four or five hours a day then for consecutively three four days I could just use it without having to worry to plug it to the system so that's a big big advantage for me especially like the typing portability battery performance is really really good you just open the lid and virtually you just immediately you see the the light glowing and it's really really fast in terms of the startup time and opening app closing app okay so so many times i've talked about app many people worry about the app compatibility it is true that most of the apps don't work in the mac yet I have not tried the Microsoft Office yet, but I tried Lightroom because I am a very uh, like photo and video enthusiast. So many people said like uh, the Lightroom had some, it was really good performance. So I tried, I think it was around 64 GB or 32 GB, I don't remember. It was a very huge uh, image file. And if I use that in my Windows system, which has the Intel and 6 GB graphics NVIDIA, sometimes I see a lag while uh, zooming in, zooming out. But here it was surprisingly very smooth and fluid um, transition. So I would really give, give it a thumbs up. Uh, in terms of photo editing and video editing so lightroom works really well uh, it has adapted here it has been adapted here so talking about the adaption uh, behind the wall there is something called rosetta which is like doing the translation of the code of the app which works in windows to make it compatible so it makes a translation on the behind the hood to make it compatible to work in the mac so in the beginning, uh, whenever you connect something which is not compatible in this, it will automatically ask and start installing Rosette, like the uh, Rosetta translation. So that will do all these works behind. And after that, whenever you install any incompatible apps, it will Rosetta will kick in automatically. You don't need to worry. When I was using the Samsung 1TB hard disk, Rosetta automatically started when I connected it because it, it the app that is needed to install it is not compatible in the Mac Air and then everything was fine. So I would recommend instead of paying a lot of money, uh, buy the basic version, that is the 256 GB version 
although be careful that it cannot be expanded but buy that and instead of paying apple like in our currency it was around 250 euros i think for 256 gb extra so if you want a 1 tb one it was somewhere around i don't remember i'll put it here in the in the info so uh, it was very expensive compared to this which i got in black friday sale for around 80 or 90 euros a 1 tb uh, Samsung, I will put that in the description or here in the image uh, and it's really really blazingly fast one of the fastest so I thought that will be a good way like go with the 256 GB version with the basic with a student discount which I bought for around uh, 1000 some euros so I paid like 1400 something because uh, I chose for 16 GB uh, RAM because I thought if I do video and photo editing with a 256 GB SSD it will be good to have a 16 GB RAM uh, in terms of the speed and everything whatever I saw on the internet few videos and uh, it's working pretty well till now uh, and I also chose the educational package which was given in Europe I don't know if it is given in India um, or rest of the world like you get a combo of the Final Cut Pro, uh, GarageBand, all the music apps, so the uh, Logic Pro X, so all the apps that you pay like 300 or 200 euros for each app to buy for a lifetime, you get that combination combo uh, for like 225 or 250 euros which is a pretty good deal so that's why because i chose instead of 8 gb the basic version 16 gb ram and the combo of these apps so i paid around 400 something euros extra in top of 1000 something after discount student discount so but still i think it's a pretty good deal and i really want to try out mac before i decide uh, buying a new windows laptop and maybe i will use both to see to tap into the advantages of windows and also mac depending on the use case that i have so some adobe apps if you are doing video editing are still not that good compatibility they have compatibility issues it is true so if you really want to do video editing i would suggest you to learn final cut pro because i came from adobe premiere pro and for me it was not that difficult to learn final cut pro uh, although i'm not expert i have learned few basics which are very similar only the interface is different the ui is different so i think you can uh, you should learn Final Cut Pro if you want to if you are really serious about doing video editing in the MacBook Air also regarding zoom which you regularly use for videos um, it's it's it has some issues so sometimes you open zoom and uh, I was also reading a blog that some people have that some people don't have it but for me if I run extended sessions of zoom sometimes the app crashes I don't know the reason maybe they are working they are trying to make it compatible so i hope it works but it's not that smooth as i expected so there are some so if you want so this is a point of advice like if you want to use this macbook air as your uh, first hand and only device for your day-to-day -day work and study or everything um, i would say take it up with caution so uh, i would not suggest you to buy this for your only device if you have some other backup device uh, some other device that you have been using then only you can buy it and try it out and uh, maybe with the next updates uh, and maybe with the next versions of m1 chip because this is the first generation of this new chipset uh, you will get better systems which will be like can be your daily driver so yeah keep that in mind well, uh, one thing was surprising was this trackpad was really, really huge. So many people said the trackpad had issues while typing, you accidentally touch your palm. But I didn't have any such issues. I agree that it was surprisingly big when I saw it for the first time for this 13 inch small laptop. Uh, you have such a big trackpad as compared to my 15.1 uh, 15 inch Windows laptop. But I think it did not cause any issues in terms of the design when you are typing really fast. So I would not rate it as a problem as I read in many places. Yeah, one thing is the audio and the speaker quality is really, really good. Maybe you'll see Norfolk, not Treasure Island. But the, um, 
i mean the microphone and this but i would not say the video quality is that good because it's okay for the meetings that you have but still uh, going to 2021 uh, or you should not have a 720p uh, webcam in a laptop at least they should give 100p and i don't know the price difference but i don't think that it would cost that much uh, difference well video editing is also surprisingly fast in final cut pro although i have tried it very little um yeah whenever i go forward and backward really really fast in some uh, i don't think i used 4k but some drone shots which were greater than 2k um i think 2.7k i don't remember so it was really really good in terms of what i saw on the windows with the nvidia uh, gpu of 6 gb um, the performance was really really surprisingly good for this small system and yeah i forgot to tell that the thing i mean we are living in a cold country in netherlands but this aluminium is really really cold and even after this extended use whenever you try to i i don't think i pushed the machine to the boundary but still i had some instances but i never found that i could feel that it is hot so without a fan the macbook air uh, i think this is the best macbook air that has been made as also rightly said by many people that's why people who are in the pro ecosystem also are switching to air because they pay like 250 or 300 bucks less and get this kind of performance with this beast uh, portable machine so that is a good thing if you compare to previous generations of mac but i am the first generation and into the first so final two things before i end the video uh, because i am from background of computer science for programming this is a really really good um, alternative because most of the programs even if you do python and many libraries uh, my experience whenever i use a software or something most of them are really, really very compatible with a unix or linux system uh, as compared to windows and it's much easier to work something from the terminal the programming guys will know so that's why it's i i tried i saw a blog uh, maybe i'll put the link here and i tried to install the tensorflow and run it uh, in python jupyter and yeah it was really nice um, so people are uh, because many people are starting to use it it has already been four months so people have written a lot of blogs they, they have shared a lot of problems uh, solutions a lot of ways you can do programming so uh, it's uh, i just tried that you can see it on the screen so i think it is working really well uh, in terms of programming and maybe it will be promising in the future to see where in which direction it goes So the final thing which many people had issues uh, because people want to connect two screens one screen uh, With this work from home setup normally when I'm writing papers or maybe editing videos uh, I don't know if college students use that but if you have at least one other screen It's very easy to drag and drop uh, files and uh, to see like work something here work something on that screen so in terms of that uh, i bought a doc which is a unnamed doc i will put the name here it's some local company um, and it is not that famous like the caldigit or the official branded sellers of mac that you should use as a hub to connect a lot of wires like because you have only i think like uh, two usb ports so two USB-C ports, so it's a very uh, low number of ports in terms of the connections you need. So that hub helps me to connect to this screen, the mouse and uh, the mouse that I was using in Windows for last six, seven years, the Dell mouse, it works here. You can see my uh, study uh, home, work from home setup tour. There I explained about this mouse. You can see it flashing on the screen. So yeah, so what I wanted to say is, even if you don't go with a branded uh, i would not advise you to go with unbranded one but i don't want to pay that much money so i went with unbranded dock and that external dock did not have any issues of heating or anything but one thing i made sure because when you connect so many wires they will draw a lot of power so what i read also in many blogs is make sure that that external dock also has a power source 
so if it has a power source it will be sufficient enough for to power all these devices that are connected to it even if they draw power or they don't draw power so i made sure that i have that and then i had no issues when i connected it with a usb c uh, usb a mouse external screen memory card it has a lot of uh, options yeah so i hope you like this video if you like this video don't forget to share with everyone click the thumbs up button uh, subscribe to the channel and see you in upcoming videos till then goodbye from netherlands peace